Welcome to Faith Talk with Anita. Thank you for joining me on the journey. Thank you for spending this time with me. In my last episode, I reflected on death and eternal life. I believe these to be foundational to who we are as Christians and extremely important topics for us to contemplate. And I believe our contemplation of eternal life must lead us to an immense sense of gratitude. How can we not be thankful when we consider what God has awaiting us? But I believe it is equally important to give thanks for all the blessings God has given and continues to give us in this life. My friends, our belief in eternal life is a big part of our Christian faith. But we're not just here on earth waiting to die and go to heaven. God gave us this earthly life for a reason. Our mortal lives right here, right now, have purpose and value. That is a fact we should never take for granted. Fittingly, we are approaching Thanksgiving Day. So I thought a reflection on gratitude would be the perfect follow-up to last week's Faith Talk. Now, I know some of you listening are not Americans and you don't live in the United States, but I hope this reflection will be relevant for you just the same. Remember that the word Eucharist means Thanksgiving. So we are a gratitude people all year long, not just on special holidays. I'll begin my reflection with the words of Jesus, and then I'll share a few of the things I am most thankful for. As you listen to my thoughts, I hope you will reflect on your own personal life experiences and all the blessings you have to be thankful for. We read many stories in the Gospels about Jesus giving thanks to God, most notably when he shared meals with his friends. But I am quite sure the official gospel accounts of his giving thanks were but a very small example of the prayers of gratitude that he offered to the Father. Gratitude was in his DNA, so to speak, which means, as Christians, it's in our DNA as well. The Gospel of Luke tells us that when Jesus was traveling through Samaria and Galilee, he entered a village and was met by 10 lepers who cried out to him. Jesus healed all 10 of them, but only one, a Samaritan, returned to give thanks to God. To that, Jesus replied, 10 were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? From this account, we can assume that Jesus expects us, all of us, to thank God for the blessings we receive. So often, like the man in this story, we take things for granted and just move on in our lives, especially when things are going well. But Jesus would have us pause and be mindful of who our blessings come from, especially when things are going well. In the story of the multiplication of loaves in John's Gospel, we are told that great crowds of people had gathered around Jesus, and he saw that they were hungry and needed to eat. When the people, about 5,000 of them, had been seated, and the food, five loaves of bread and two fish, had been prepared, John tells us. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining. The very first thing Jesus did was give thanks for the gift of this food, even this small amount of bread and fish. Jesus knew well that all food is a life-sustaining gift from God. 
and receiving a gift, especially one as big as this, calls for gratitude. We see the same gratitude for food during the Last Supper. Luke's Gospel tells us that Jesus took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. Then he took the bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. Clearly, acknowledging that all blessings come from God and offering thanks to God is crucial for us. Let us remember the words of St. Paul, the man who I believe was the most influential person in the forming of our church, aside from Jesus, of course. Paul said, In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And of course, we remember the words of the psalmist, Give thanks to the Lord, who is good, whose love endures forever. Now, let me share some personal thoughts. I try to live gratefully every day of my life. The first thing I do when I wake up each morning is thank God for my life and the gift of the new day. And I say a prayer of thanks each night before I fall asleep for the blessings of the day. But I also try to keep gratitude in the forefront of my mind throughout the day. Whenever I am mindful of what's happening and I recognize a blessing, however small and insignificant it may seem, I say a short prayer of thanks. Sometimes it's as simple as three little words. Thank you, Lord. Recently, I've had a lot to be thankful for as I'm sure you have. Let me share a few examples. I'm dealing with a few health issues right now. Nothing life-threatening, but still issues that I need to focus on. I am thankful that even with these health issues, I am still strong and well enough to get up each morning and live my life. I'm extremely thankful for my husband and all the support he gives me. And I'm thankful for the doctors, nurses, and other medical personnel who are helping me. And right now, my husband and I are having a new house built, so we have a lot on our plates. It's very close to being finished, which I am extremely thankful for. I am thankful for all the people who are part of the process. Our contractor, the men and women who are doing all the hard work, and our neighbors who are being very patient with the noise and traffic. Of course, I'm thankful for all my family members and friends who love and care for me. I'm thankful for the food, water, and air that sustains me, and for the natural beauty that surrounds me. I am thankful for all the people and experiences that allow me to learn, grow, and enjoy life. And of course, I'm thankful for God's great gifts that inspired this faith talk, the gift of this life and the life in heaven that awaits me. My friends, let us live as Jesus did and as St. Paul and the psalmist urged us to live in unceasing gratitude for all of God's blessings, both here and now and in the life to come. After all, gratitude is in our DNA. Please be assured that I am thankful for you. I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Let us pray in the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson. We give thanks for each new morning with its light, for rest and shelter of the night for health and food, for love and friends, for everything thy goodness sends. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Please share this with anyone who might benefit and join me in my next faith talk. Until then, I will be praying for you. May God bless you.